which is on our grand standard assets and NFTs. So let me share my screen. Um, uh, Um, okay, I suppose you can see my screen now. Um, confirmations, please. You can see my screen. Right, okay. Uh, okay, so. Um, sorry. Okay, um, right. Um, so um, I will just give a, a, a brief in, introduction about like uh, what's like the standard assets of um, our grant and um, and what are NFTs, uh, and then we'll move on to like um, trying on a little bit on uh, playing a little bit on um, our grand sandbox, basically. So yeah. Uh, first, like uh, what are transactions? Uh, transactions are the core element of blocks. Uh, they are the way we change the state of the, our blockchain. And there are uh, six types of uh, transactions on Algorand, uh, within the Algorand protocol, which are payment and key registration, asset freeze and asset transfer and application call. So um, we, we might uh, like understand this a little bit better uh, later on, but yeah, just like um, uh, you can create an asset and then you can uh, transfer it to another to another user, um, someone else. Uh, you can freeze the asset. Basically, that means that you prevent it from being transferred further. So just like uh, it cannot be changed anymore. Um, yes, is there a question? Yes, Rodolf? Okay, let me ask. Um, when a, a transaction, uh, when a, an asset is a freeze, uh, you said that it cannot be transferred anymore. Uh, yeah. Does it mean that uh, we can, uh, for the, for instance, for the certificate, uh, for the certificate, once we have the certificate as an uh, NFT, uh, we can freeze it and it cannot be transferred to anyone other than the, the first owner. Is that correct? We can, I, can we apply I, that? In can you, sorry, I can't don't hear you very well. Can you maybe fix your mic or something? Mm. Okay. Is it better now? Yes. Uh, yeah. Now repeat what you were saying. Okay. I'm basically asking in our project uh, <clears throat> because we do not want to to our certificate to be transfer. Uh, yes. From uh, yeah, from uh, uh, many people. So uh, a freezer our certificate our nft in this case will be a, a, a good a way to deal with i just wanted to to have yes. a confirmation of my my thoughts yes so, you you are right so an, an nft can be it doesn't need to be frozen i mean in general like you can create an nft it's a, the basic thing about an F, nft is that it is an asset that is in irreplaceable and in interchangeable um so there is only a unique one of it, but uh, in principle, you can make you can uh, yeah, an NFT can be allowed to be transferred, right? You can like an, get an NFT, maybe I buy it and then I sell it to someone else. That's fine. But uh, yes, in our case, we don't maybe we don't want uh, this like we fix the owner of the certificate and we don't want it to be transferred to anyone else, so we can freeze it. And you will see later on that we can set when we create an asset, 
we can set uh, like uh, who gets to freeze on unfreeze and this asset so um i mean we can also as a creator of the asset we can change this later or on also anyway what your intuition is right yes we can freeze in our case it's a good idea to freeze um uh, the the nft that we will create very good um um, all right, so I was talking about this basic <clears throat> I'm sorry, sorry. Um, okay, I was talking about this basic uh, transactions um, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> so um, so yeah in in uh, like uh, in order to be approved to or committed to the block, transactions have to to comply with these basic things. Um, they have to be signed. Uh, I, I, you, I mean, yesterday, yeah, Babal was was discussing the whole thing about like having a private key and a public key and this whole security thing on on uh, the blockchain. Uh, basically, any um, user on on. Um, on the blockchain will have uh, like a private key that can use to sign um, whatever transactions they, they make. Um, you'll see later that you can create an asset and you can also opt in to receive an asset. So like the creator and the receiver and in each, in each one of these transactions, you will have to sign it <clears throat> with your private key so that like it's valid and it knows that it is you who like um, to verify that it is you who like uh, approved or created this transaction. There are also fees for a transaction. And uh, this is a way to protect uh, the blockchain from attacks basically. So there is a minimum requirement and I think it's one, um, uh, it's a uh, uh, 0.001 algo. Um, so <clears throat> you will see yes later than when you create yeah we, we will see this when we create and then um a standard asset uh we'll see that you'll have to have a minimum of uh of um this amount in your account and uh around validity to handle transaction um uh, yeah so this is like um uh, one second i'm sorry one second sorry
Ha, hello, I'm sorry. There is um like my environment is a bit noisy and I couldn't stop the noise. So um, forgive me if uh, like it gets a bit too noisy uh, at some point. Um, can you hear me well right now? Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry. So uh, I was talking about like um, I'm very sorry to I interrupt the flow so we're talking about like the minimal minimal things that we need to oh, come on uh yeah so the minimal thing we have to do to comply uh, or like the minimal thing we have to set uh, or to have we have to um comply with when we uh, like carry on any transaction on our grant blockchain and um yeah so yeah we talk about the technician and the fees and the round ability this have to you have to set it like um like when do you want your um your transaction to be uh um submitted to to, to the blockchain basically um yeah so within how many blocks um would it be it can be like uh, submitted immediately or within a thousand blocks uh, okay so yeah so let's talk about the algorand standard assets these are like provide under standard uh, standard standardized um, layer one mechanism to represent any type of asset on the algorand um, blockchain so this is like something specific or like um a uh, special priority of uh, algorand this is not uh, like on in on other um blockchains uh, ethereum or uh, for example you will need to uh, to create a, like a smart contract to create all of this like i don't an, an nft on and stuff like that but on algorand like you is you have this standardized um, asset that will make everything easier to do so you can just like set a few parameters and then you can just create your nft for example uh yeah so it can you can also create like um other stuff uh with talkings and um uh, uh, uh other fungible assets <clears throat> um like um uh, home deeds or whatever you want to create um so a special case is an nft uh the non-fungible tokens um well okay this is a definition of them like it's a it's a unique it has a unique identification code unique metadata it's like um, um a unique cryptographic asset on the blockchain um it cannot the the main thing it cannot be replaced replaced it cannot be interchanged that's uh, like the what makes it an nft um so it's not like uh, cryptocurrencies or um uh, for example this can be traded and 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 interchanged and exchanged with no with no problem they are identical these are cryptocurrencies but for non-fungible tokens they are just unique they cannot be um uh, uh exchanged um so yeah so this is what is your um basically your challenge for this week is you you want to create nfts which are like this certificate for uh trainees and they have to be unique for each trainee so yeah um um so that's basically it um any question so far because from this we're going to move on to like playing playing with um uh algorand sandbox uh talking about it um have you tried to set it up um have you managed to set up uh, the algorand sandbox yes i see a few hands there have you faced problems anyone who wants to <clears throat> okay yes uh, i know because you had another um yes rodolf Yes, I was not able to uh, to install it, but I think it is because of uh, internet connection problem. I do not have a strong one yet. Mm. But have you managed to clone 
the only thing that need the internet is the cloning you have to clone the the repo yeah, yeah yes yes I, I clone the report it's yeah. when i, I launch the uh, around the command uh, uh, that slash uh, uh, send boss up dev uh yeah. it's not yeah that it's command is still running no it's it's running several minutes yeah it's not it's not it's i don't think it's the internet this is docker your your lab like, because basically what's happening um underneath this um a sandbox app is that you are like uh, running a docker compose file where you're setting up uh sand um like several services, several images, and then creating containers. So in the end, yeah, it takes time. It took time for me also. Uh, so um, uh, I, I don't know, maybe be patient if it, it, it didn't run for a long time, just leave it, it probably it will, it will work. Um, if it didn't, you can go and check um, uh, your Docker and see if you manage to create the images, it's managed to create the containers or not. You, you're supposed to have like, um, yes, you can also check the log file. Yes. Uh, you can also, when you like run the sandbox up uh, dev, you can add uh, uh, minus V so that you can, you can see like, uh, uh verbose, um, what's happening uh yeah so i can show you basically it's a simple thing so i'm running this on windows well it's uh, wsl um and yeah so it's basically uh, like um, i okay, am not see i cannot go back uh, enough but all you have to do is to have to you can see that on the let me go back it's here as algorand it's very simple i have to stop this annoying notification i'm sorry um uh, okay all uh, right so yeah so this is the uh, algorand uh sandbox uh, repo and you can see it's just like it it gives you like the instruction how to set it up so the um, if you have uh, the pre prerequisites are like you have to have docker installed so whether you are on windows or on open or whatever system you are in you have to have docker compose uh, have have docker and docker compose so um uh one if you have that you just have to clone the repo go inside it and just run this dot backslash sandbox up and um slash not slash but okay um uh you can add dev uh this is like not necessary because it's i think it's uh it's the default um but that's all all it is so if it takes it can take time to run this up um so you can see it here i'm running um sandbox up dev and um, yeah yes um yeah uh, go ahead, Idiot. So um, on the uh, on the file that I've shown now, it says if you're using Ubuntu, you have to you have to link the Docker and uh, Sandbox thing. Like, can you open the GitHub right now? Yes. Yes. So it says uh, for Ubuntu, you may need to align Docker to sudo Docker or follow those steps in this link. Is that something? Is there some, something that this uh this thing what, will uh, sorry i'm not i'm, I'm not using uh, wait wait what are you reading i here like cds uh, under the line cd sandbox and do sandbox up yes it says okay. this will run the sandbox right and yeah below that for yes. ubuntu not for ubuntu it says ah you need to alias uh docker to docker uh to, to sodo docker maybe yeah this is something probably you i i i mean anyone who um who installed docker for robin to properly did this already you just need to um to be able to run docker because like when you install docker you know install it basically for the root uh, user so with any with any like uh when you need when you run docker um um uh commands like this i mean you have to use so sudo if you are going to, i'm using the normal user so I would have to use sudo docker to run any docker um, 
uh, commands, but uh, if you do this step that they talk about, you just you use you get to use Docker right away. So yeah, you don't need to use sodo every time. And I think probably the files they have have Docker will not work if you don't have sodo if you if you don't set this up already in your on your. Um, um, I was asking this question because uh, I am I'm also using uh, Ubuntu, so and I'm not able to install um, the sandbox sandbox algorithm. Okay, so, so yeah, and so, you say that it's not about the connection. I thought it was about the connection. I have cloned the GitHub link, so and I, I, like uh, Rudolf mentioned it before. I guess I ha I'm not able to run the this command dot slash sandbox on the on the terminal. That is why, yeah. maybe if it is related with okay, this thing. Okay, does it run for a bit and tells you that you cannot set up a few services or do you get something else? Of course, on the on the first phase, uh, it says like it had started to run and there is a hot in the middle. I don't know why, but now it is. it just keeps uh, turning. It, it just keeps loading and there's no result. Okay. Um, uh, all right. So let's let's uh, discuss this a little bit after. Bes yes, I'm just saying because for me, I tried to run it on a couple of computers, and then in both, it took some time to run uh, to to be set up like this. So um, I'm just saying it's like because it's, now it's working for me. Let's uh, after this, uh, uh, let me try sandbox test and. Um, um okay. and uh what did it, what did it say well basically yeah so it works in fine um yeah it's, it's like showing me like the different api I have and um okay um yeah so uh, yes, I'm just saying, like, for people who didn't run for them completely, um, if it stopped at some point, um, or if you get some kind of a particular error, check the log file, and maybe you can, um, like, um, I mean, uh, we can discuss this more on Slack, yes, but the, I'm just saying, like, I, I noted that the, the Sandbox app itself takes time to run. So if it takes time, don't worry. It will take, uh, I don't know, for me, it took maybe 20 minutes or something. I don't, yeah, Fano? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Uh, so really, uh, I forgot to mention, but you have to run it as a root. Like your terminal has to be a root user. It seems you cannot run uh, the sandbox app with sudo. Like we usually do sudo for Docker PS or any Docker related to commands, right? Mm -hmm. So for this one, since it is wrapped up in the sandbox app, uh, I mean, terminal it, command, you have it, to run the terminal at first, like in your That's how it works for me. Uh, well, yeah, but I, 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 I would, I would, yes, that I don't know if that would work or not, but. Um, I would suggest or I would recommend better that you do this. What they recommend is a good thing. Like, um, I mean, it's recommended like in different, <laughs> uh, you find it's recommended in different, um, with different stuff. So it's not only with Sandbox. Uh, just do this. If you if you are running Docker as a, like if you're, you can work with an on root user, but do this so that you can use Docker um, um, without using sudo. Um, so this is like, it's a very simple that, that for it. Yes, that's yeah. better, uh, I think. Uh, so yeah, let's go back. Uh, yeah, the sandbox problems, let's discuss them on Slack for now. Uh, I just wanted to note that it takes time to, to run up and you can see that because it's running like, um, and it's uh, like Docker open up, please. Um, anyway, I'm sorry if you, Okay, I just wanted you to see the like because it's setting up images. Um, um, so, like setting up these images and um, 
Postgres and Sandbox, these three Sandbox images, and then running the containers. Uh, so yeah, it's a Docker within um, when when you run this Sandbox app command. Anyway, uh, so once we run this, uh, um, we are going to be working on like a local is this dev um, network. It's basically um we are simulating basically the the algorand blockchain and uh we get uh, like uh, a few counts right away from here so um uh okay so these are the public keys and the public key is also the um, the you like the account id basically um this is what you share with everyone and big here we can see like um uh, if you see like the commands you can use here um so oh God, right, sorry um okay uh, okay so um Sandbox goal, I think it accounts. Um, not sure. Let's see. Get help. Um, yes. Uh, so. Uh, okay. See, I can I can manage the account. Like I have this all the commands they have. Um, for this and um. To get uh, a second export, right? Sorry. Oh, I can and um, okay. So, what can we do with these accounts? Um, um okay so uh let's demonstrate uh, that uh, like um, try to do uh, like um a transaction basically um let me go back to the okay let's there is a list i can get a list of accounts the accounts i have right now um this oh, mistake All right, so yeah, as I just want you to look at this. So yeah, there is a public key and then there is a, um, okay, they don't have any, um, oh, sorry, it's here. Uh, so this is um, like um, how much uh, algos they have. Um, so the accounts like are in micro algo, so like whatever this is this number. And um okay, uh um okay, let's let's uh, first um create a new account. Is it that enough? So I have this uh, new account with a new address. I, I should be able to see it in the account list. And you can see this is my new account. I just created and it has zero microalgos. <laughs> um, okay, so what I will do is that I'm going to transfer some micro algos or from algos from one of these account to my new account. That's what I'm planning to do. Okay, so bear with me. Um, I don't have these uh, um, commands memorized, but we'll manage. So I'm, I'm basically doing this on the same speed you'll be doing it. 
Do you hear me well? Because like it's very noisy around here. Okay, and can you follow what I'm doing? Is like my screen too small or something? If am I going too slow for you? <laughs> um, okay, let's uh, let's let's do this transaction and then we can like um, um, let's how, oh to going so slow. Um, all right. Uh, so first. Uh, to do as we said before for any transaction to to the minimum thing that you have to do uh, like we have to sign it uh, i mean you have to have a, like um a minimum amount of uh, of algos and we have those so our um, uh, our accounts have like um, have uh, algos in them like they satisfy this this minimum requirement we have to sign them so we have to know the the private key and this is only um uh, like in this um, sandbox because um, it gave us like this uh, created for us these accounts there's a command we can tell we can get the private key from the public key usually you don't you, you, it's not something mathematical this is just because it's these accounts are registered here um, uh, so I think uh, it's account Sorry. and export if i'm not wrong um and then let's take the public key of this one Um, how can I? Finally, ah, uh, sorry, so I made, um, I should add, um, say. So yeah, so we get the minom uh, the minomic for this account, this one, uh, this string, or well, this list of words, and um, okay, let's try. Okay, sorry. Um, um okay. okay um Um, yeah, so, um, um, all right, uh, do I need to get the private key from this? account um, okay, to like know the structure of it you know make a string so yeah mm. Okay. 
All right. All right. So, um, okay, let's see. Um, I'm sorry. Let's start over. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, um, I was trying to remember the like the how the what are the requirements for to run a command to do the current transaction, but there is no need. Um, let's okay. Uh, let me just have the account here. Like uh, again, I want to to transfer uh, algos from the first account to the new account that has zero microalgos. And to do that, um, just need a transaction. What is, um, okay, I just want to, um, Okay, so uh, it's a clerk provide the tools for controlling transactions. Um, I hope this is a bit at least instructive because I'm going too slow because I didn't. Um, this is not good. Um, I'm just like using help um, to to look for the commands I need. Um, so yeah. So we see like the command we need is uh, send money uh, to an address. Okay. So so it's clerk and send, but still of course have to set up. Okay. Uh, we have to send the amount. Okay. And then uh, um, uh okay from the account that is sending and um but it's the, the, the account that receives it has to be here also two so we have f and t and we have um um okay let's um let's do this so we have the amount. Um, it's it's like um, it will be micro algos. So let's send um, two algos. So two millions, right? And uh, from let's go back to our list. So taking from the first account. Um, why is it wrong? Why? why does it take so long to copy? Um, and two. Come on. So uh, this transaction is still missing a signature, right? So it shouldn't um, go. Okay, and it's not signed yet. Um, so the transaction is completed, but if we look at, so, um, um, 
Right, yes, went. So uh, apparently there is, should be a flag that is, does it need to be signed? Anyway, um, so yeah, it worked. Uh, basically, the transaction went, um, and you can see like uh, we have. Um, um, so the account here is like uh, we it, it's like minus two algos, and then uh, also the transaction fee, which is. Um, um, 1,000 micro algos. So, um, and we didn't have to sign here uh, because it's, it's set up like that. It doesn't need to be signed. But um, I mean, in, in, in the real thing, it wouldn't work like that. So this is just a simple transaction. I'm sorry that it's not, I didn't remember the commands right away. So it took me some time. Was this clear? Uh, like, do you have any questions? Like, uh, because we can move on to doing this. We, because we're not going to work. You're not going to work with um, with um, uh, either with from the command line. So, uh, we will do this. Um, can do this uh, using a Python a Python. Uh, package for, particularly for to dealing with um, with Algorand blockchain this algo SDK basically and um, yeah let's just move on to that um, uh, in the meanwhile is there any question or I'll move on to this right away any confirmation? Everything is fine so far? Is it clear? Is it confusing? Is it too slow? Are you super bored? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, yes, so I, I will just move on. I will consider that it's everything is clear. Um, so, uh, okay, um, let's see if there's, like, everything is fine here, yeah, let's connect it, oh God. Um, okay. And I'm going to, okay, this, um, this notebook, uh, like you said, um, set it to have like my, the accounts, the accounts, uh, private keys or the, the minomics, uh, secret. So in an dot MV file, but, um, I mean, we're not going to do that here. I'm just going to put them right away. Like, um, uh, let's go back to my accounts. So this is my account list. So, um, okay, these are the public keys. There's a way to get the public keys right away. Um, right. Um, I will just do that. So, and to, I'll get the, okay. So, account, um, so export and minus A.
So this is my first genomic. Me uh, I'll put it here, right? And um, of course, when you work um, in in your case, well, this is like the first thing you, you, I. It just says start uh, start, but in 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 practice, you'll have to use. This is something that will be explained later. You have to use a wallet to keep your private, public and private keys. And of course, you're not going to ask, uh, um, I mean, the trainees or whoever users, you are going to want to transfer assets for them to like to reveal their, their private keys, of course, to you. Um, you will have to set up your code so, so that you will get this. Uh, um, but here, I'm just like, we are working very, um, how to say, See how many we need. Two should be enough. The counts. Um, okay. Oh God. Um. Right. I'm sorry. Okay. Two accounts should be fine. And right. So, so, yeah, I'm calling this monomic one and monomic two for two accounts I have. And then, um, so basically, um, monomic two, okay, so this are get monomic from algo SDK account monomic here. And um, basically, um there is a function to to public key or to private key so let's see like um nomic one and run this so this fth okay this is uh this is one this is account here right fthk this one this one uh, the other one like we'll get it that that um as a private key, uh, we can also get the private key. Sorry. Right. Yeah. So this is a private key. That's what that's what we will use to sign uh, the transactions later. So uh, I'm going here. It's I'm putting them into like um, a dictionary, basically. Um, and like for each account and for like public key and uh, private key or secret key. Okay, um, so this is the node address. So I'm talking, I'm using Al Algon, Al Al God API, right? Um, so this is a Algod client. So this is what you see here. Sorry, here in the instructions. Everything takes forever, but um, sorry for that. Okay, it's here. Can get it from here. This is the API endpoints. And uh, okay, so yeah, yeah, printing the public keys from my um, accounts. So yeah, creating an asset is one of the um, transactions we can do. Uh, this is an example. So there is like a parameter you can set. So this is a function you get. Um, I'll go to future transactions. 
um, this asset configuration, asset transfer, and asset freeze. Um, so here I'm cre creating some asset called, uh, yeah, this is a name. It's an, it's an optional, but it's better to call it. I think, yeah, the name is optional or the unit name is optional, actually. Um, let me just check. Um, well, it's not important, really. Um, so, yeah, some of these are required. Anyway, um, yeah, so um, the total, this is the total number of, of, uh, of uh, assets you want to create. So I'm creating a thousand um, units, a thousand um, assets of this kind. And I'm setting the um, account manager, the, sorry, the asset manager and the account that will freeze it. Uh, or can claw it back, basically take it back. And um, the URL, this is like optional. You can also set the metadata and stuff. So in this, uh, to create an NFT in, in this, this is just um, like my asset is not uh, um, an NFT. Can you tell me why? Does anyone want to tell me why it's not an NFT? Well, it's very obvious. Hello? Do you hear me? Yeah. yeah. We hear you, but we can, you can see the screen. You cannot see my screen. Now it, yeah, now I can see. OK. Um, so yeah, so I was. Yeah, I'm creating an asset, basically. This is like um, uh, um, a function to create an asset on our Algorand blockchain, uh, well, my version of it, my the development version. But yeah, so I'm creating an asset. I'm creating a total number of a thousand of it. I call, I'm calling it, I, basically, it's, um, let's say it's a, it's a currency, basically. Uh, or a token. I'm just asked, uh, why is it not an NFT? Can you? Well, because I'm creating a thousand of it, of course. Yeah, I just answered it. I didn't wait. Yes, Abdul Hamid. Yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah, because I'm creating a thousand of it. It's not an NFT. Um, okay, uh, so I will run this. And you can see, like, I, I'm creating uh, it and then signing it. Uh, yes. Yes, uh, I, don't, I don't really understand why um, the fact that you created uh, the total, the parameter total, which is a uh, 1,000, mm -hmm. uh, directly means that it is not an NFT. Yes, well, it's simple because if our NFT has to be one. It's not, it cannot be a thousand of them. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So it is uh, the uh, the number the number of uh, the asset you are creating. Yes, I'm creating a thousand of this asset, not one. Okay, a thousand. Okay, and, good. Yes, uh, <laughs> exactly. So, um, and later on we'll create an NFT, but this is just a normal asset, and uh, you can see that I can. Um, let me just uh, okay. So I created it as this is at this at this step. I can send it to another uh, to another account. Um, send it to okay. Um, sorry. So first here I created the asset I I signed, but then I have to send the transaction to the network and receive the the transaction ID. Okay is important um so uh so this i i connect with the i got client and send the transaction there it has to be verified there 
uh, and once it's confirmed, it will return a uh, text ID for me. So I will have to see it. See, it worked. So yeah, you see that it was signed. And uh, this is a this is a transaction ID. Um, is that confirmed in round two? All right. Um, so to see like uh, this uh, transaction ID uh, or like this. Um, so it's wait for confirmation. This returns like uh, an object that I can get like um, information from it. I'm using like a JSON. Uh, format here. Um, you can see like this asset, um, like um, a signature. This is like the private keys I signed it, and uh, um, yeah, here's uh, the like the name, the total, and the fees. Um, okay. Um, okay. Next. Uh, we can see that, like, if you look at the, um, uh, um, the like the the information like of my account. If I look at the information of the of the creator account, account number one for me here, I will see that it has this asset in. Um, sorry. Uh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, this is like I'm using some functions that I didn't realize. Okay, so this. Um, okay. I thought it's just mm, right. Um, let's see, let's like define these functions here. Oh, it's just a different name. The, function, the file itself is a different name. Um, Right. This work, although it would I need to run the whole thing again. So name again, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Doesn't matter. So I will just put these um functions inside my uh, notebook um these are just like utility functions i'm i'm using them over and over again so come on it takes so much time what is this oh, of course oh, god I'm trying to go quickly, but then I'm making uh, mistakes, but sorry. Um, right, and then I will just... I just want to show you, like, um, the account should show me, the account information should show me that it has, like, these assets. Um, and like, and uh, like who has the, like, who manages it, who's the creator, the, who has a, um, clawback freeze as the manager, um, like the information of, of my assets and the amount of it. And it's not frozen. Uh, okay. So I can transfer them like, okay, I can change the manager. I'm not going to do that here um so to transfer like the asset we have the receiver has to first opt in basically doing a transaction uh from basically with the name or with the sorry with the asset id 
um, but like from from the account to itself, basically. So that's the transaction of form. Let's see. Yes, um, um, okay. Uh, I'm just using account number two here, and this is like. Um, case and um okay so you see like it's an asset transfer but it's the sender and the receiver are the same um the same account what's important is that the index is the asset id and um so okay this asset id it's here this is the asset id i'm talking about okay um so i'm opting in yeah so i'm signing with the uh, um of course here i'm looking for mistake Fine, everything's fine now. Um, okay. And then after the opt in, I can finally transfer the asset from account one to account number two. Um, I'm transferring like 10. Let's transfer whatever number I want. Created a thousand. Can transfer hundreds of them. And um, yeah, so I'm using asset transfer. And then the, the sender has to sign it. And then of course you have to, after creating the transfer, signing it, you have to send it to the API, have to have it confirmed, get back the, the, the transaction ID. Um, and then I can see like, if the trans that transfer is finished, I have to see like the account number one has uh, 100 less uh, of the asset and account number two has 100 of them. So let's run this. Um, okay. I don't have account number two here, of course. Should be able, yeah. So ah, I, you see, I did the transfer uh, because I ran it twice. I did two transfers, um, so now I have it has two hundred instead of of one. Anyway, uh, like uh, okay, we can do an asset freeze. Um, it's like the same kind of thing. It's uh, like a asset freeze. You have like the account that controls the freezing of of the of the of the asset, which is account number one here, and the target is the owner of the assets that I want to freeze. And um, um, okay, and once I do that, like I can also revoke uh, the asset, same kind of uh, like um, whoever control how to revoke it, which is like in my case, account number one. Sorry, it's a mess. Um, account number one will can revoke um, the assets. I just wanted to show you destroying the assets also is, is an option. Uh, okay. It's because we went over time. Uh, we can go on. I think we have some time if you... I'm not sure if we have some time to the next session or not. Um, but let's... Um, yeah. Abdul Hamid. So I have a question regarding the asset revoking yeah. so for example if account one sends an asset to account two can yeah. account revoke the asset that he, he sent previously yes uh basically when you set uh, the account when you set the um, when you create the assets when you create the assets we set like who controls um um when to revoke it or not 
sorry uh, was there a... so yeah we gave this uh, power to account number one yeah okay thank you um any questions like do you want me to go yes on again Maybe yes I have, a, I have a question yes yeah regarding the last question that my fellow asked uh it is said that in when we are on a blockchain everything we have we have done is is uh, immutable so when we sent uh the transaction and we revoke that transaction don't you think that it is a uh, uh, opposite of the philosophy of blockchain sorry don't you think that it is uh, a kind of uh, against the the rule of blockchain of the principle of blockchain so what what is again is the rules of blockchain the fact that yes the owner after sending uh, a transaction is able to revoke that um okay it's uh, it doesn't have to be like um I, i'm just um the thing is that everyone can see this uh, information about the asset so this is uh let's say agreed upon beforehand if the if the owner can revoke it or not let me see if um is it possible to have an asset that cannot be revoked um, um uh, i'm not sure if this is possible uh, right um what do you think um what i'm doing is that i'm looking it up i'm looking it up basically if there is a way in our grant to like uh um so anyone who knows like the answer to this like i cannot like um uh, so so what's that uh i know is so is it foreign. possible to yeah is it possible basically to uh to set uh, to create an asset with like a manager or the some the account that revoke it to be empty so that no one can revoke it basically this is like this is the question i'm trying to answer here um so um from what I um, see, yeah. I think, I think uh, sorry to interrupt. I think what Rodolfo is trying to ask is, is that the concept of revocations does not exist in blockchain, or it's actually literally reverse or opposite of what blockchain does. Because um, Rodolfo is trying to say is that when, when one transaction join a ledger or the blockchain database similar, uh, which, which is known for ledger, then that things can never get back unless that wallet returned it voluntarily and so, so so the question that rudolph is saying is that revoke or the concept of revoke or giving the uh, or the owners or the creator of that asset can revoke actually taking away of one of their um, uh, triangular transparency that they have on blockchain which is transparency and security and confidentiality so i think i think that part it's actually a bit confusing also for all of us like why the revocations if it's a blockchain if there okay. is a revocations then i think the authenticity is, is going to went away with that okay i get it i get it i think i get that, your question yes so, so um i see the confusion the point is this is an option right so 
uh, the the security, the transparency of in in blockchain is that this uh, information about the transaction is uh, open to anyone to see. You can see um, like uh, who created it, who um, who is managing it, who who can revoke it if it's possible, who can claw it back, basically return it to the so to, to the creator, uh, who can freeze it. All of that is like all, like is known for everyone, okay? From the from the beginning, you saw that the user had like the yeah. the receiver gets to opt in to to receive this asset, and they of course the receiver will also is able to see all of this information, of course. Yeah, so, yeah. That, that's not actually the issue. No, no, no. Uh, we, just okay. wait. Just wait a second. So if uh, what's uh, like the the sender and the receiver um wants uh, to have an asset that cannot be revoked the creator has to create it with with this uh, like with this revoke uh, um account empty uh, and make it like uh, so um the, if the manager is empty then he cannot change this asset anymore and then, of course, this is like an it's agreed up, it's agreed upon between the two parties. In other cases, maybe it's fine for for whoever. Like for example, let's say, then academy wants to give the certificates to to the trainees, but they have they want to receive the to um, they want to have the right to revoke the certificates or um, if the trainees like um, um, didn't comply with something. Okay, so they put this condition, and maybe they put the manager as some uh, not ten academy, maybe some like third third party that was going to be like um, let's say it's um, um, and uh, uh, like a diff, um, how to say uh, uh, a third party that is not in, uh, like a, a fair uh, a fair judge between the two. So that they can decide if it can be revoked or not. In in some cases, it might make sense to to have this, and the both parties agree to that. In other cases, if you want an asset that cannot be revoked, and we cannot be changed, cannot be clawed back, um, you can you set this to empty, and everyone like uh, knows this from the start. You cannot change it anymore. Um, this trans uh, transparency is that this. Uh, Conditions. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, let's first so say is that. Is, yeah. So the conditions is that. Um, right? Which one is the default state then for Algorand? Is it the is, is it the revocations is the default, or the uh, not be able to revoke an asset given by you already? Um. um when I say default, I meant to say um, the blockchain or the whole this algo blockchain. Um, uh, which one is actually the rare case or the unique case or the outsider or the non-straight case? Is it is it is it uh, being able to revoke an asset, or or is it is it uh, or is it to be able to revoke an asset? Which one is the default state? for this whole blockchain, that's one thing we want to know. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I, like, um, I'm not sure if I get your question completely, um, because this, I mean, this is an, this is like, uh, you're creating an asset, it's, um, uh, I, I it doesn't have to do with, with, with yeah, okay. yeah it's, it's not it doesn't have to do with with the with the actual state of the of the blockchain itself um it's, this is like something optional on top cre created on top on, on it or like uh, you're using the blockchain to do this um what is the standard what is the what is the like um what is the default in in in, in creating this um create in in creating assets um or what is the most used one? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. What is the standard? Okay, so in, yeah. One thing, one thing I want, 
my question was like the follow let me try to explain it in a better format is that um an asset could be me transferring a money for example mm -hmm. or a currency mm -hmm. an asset could be me sending you an nft link address of an image an asset yeah. could be me sharing a pdf or certificate with you yeah right mm -hmm. so to 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 initiate all of this asset uh, or to general or to do one of those assets for example me want to transfer for you one one token then what is the default i know the contract could be customizing somehow but if, if we don't want to customize it any in any format then how can i send like when i send one token from from nasrallah to imtinan mm -hmm. then that transaction by default should not be revoked by default if it's a mistake, then it's a mistake. That's that's no, no, that's how protocol run. Yeah, no, it's not the transaction. Oh, sorry. So it's not the transaction that can be revoked. It's the asset itself. So um, it's not the the transaction. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, maybe I'm seeing the confusion here. The transaction is, cannot be taken back. Basically, once you um, you do this transaction, what is committed, it's there on the blockchain. Everyone can see it. That's it but when you create an so first the first step you create the asset and then you transfer it. this is of course this doesn't, this doesn't apply when you're transferring algos for example because this already exists you have them or not but when you create an asset yourself so i'm creating a token for me or i'm creating a certificate in our case in ten academy this is something I'm creating. So I created an, a certificate for you, for example, Nasrallah. Yes, Nasrallah passed um, week two, um, week three um, challenge, for example. I created this. So this is when I create the asset. I have to set, like I have uh, requirements. I have to set them. The, like I'm the creator, this is my account. And then I have to set the manager of this uh, asset this nft or this certificate I have to set the amount i have to set um, the units i have to set like um, uh, the metadata of course i'm setting this and then i sign i sign this and i commit it to i send i send um i'm creating this nft this is the first step then uh, once i created the, the the asset this nft i send you Nasrallah, the, the ID of this NFT, you can opt in to receive it. At, at that point, everyone can see like the properties of this asset. Is it, can, well, is it, um, can it be revoked? Can it be um, clawed back? Can it be frozen? For example, let's say that I set it to be not to be revoked, but it can be frozen. I'm going to freeze it once you receive it, okay? Because I want it only to be yours not someone else's so you opt in you see all of this information so all this information transparency is that everyone can see this information now and then i send you once i, I do a transaction is i send you this um this uh, certificate because i set the clawback and the and the re revoke actually I'm, I'm not sure what is the difference between revoke and clawback but let's say I set both of these two to empty. So no one can revoke it. Can, no one can take it back from you. This transaction is done. It's done. Now you have this certificate. It's yours. But I freeze it. You cannot transfer it. I freeze it. I, I, and if you talk to me, maybe I can unfreeze it and then let you transfer it if you want. OK, it doesn't make any sense to a certificate, but yeah. Um, if it was an NFT, that's something like a special. I can set it to be like um, to not freeze it. I'm not allowed to freeze it. No one can, is allowed to freeze it. Then, um, okay, that's that's like something that I set from the beginning. Uh, from the start, I can set like okay, I agree with you, Nasrallah, that if you like, um, I don't know, if I discover, for example, that you cheated at some point, that I'm going to revoke this certificate from you then from the start when i create the nft i set the revoke account to be me or let's say like let's say 
not me, not you, let's say, I will, we're going to use Yababble as our judge. And I will going to set the clawback or the revoke uh, account to be Yabbles. And this is what we agree on from the beginning. So when I send the certificate to you, still it's done, but Yabbles can at, at um, this agreed upon condition. If you, we discover that you cheated at some point, he can revoke the certificate. So, okay. So these are the scenarios I can think about. Does this uh, like, um, make sense to you? I don't know. For because for me it makes sense that we have all of these options from the start. We so, can set them and agree on these conditions or these um, terms. Both of us doesn't affect the transaction, but it affects the the, the 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 nature of the asset that we created from the start. Yes, you were saying something? No. Um, okay. And it still really doesn't make sense. If that's the case you, you're trying to say, and then in yeah. end, you, you meant to say it's kind of an escort or escort contract. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe because I did not start researching about algo blockchain, so it might not make sense for me. But uh, the question was not for me, honestly, it was for. Um, no, no, it's, it's fine. But I, I mean, um, honestly, I am not either an expert on this. I guess like uh, I just had a little bit more experience than you guys. Uh, but it's um, uh, I might be misunderstanding something here. But um, from what I understand, I think if the point is not that all the assets that you create on block on the blockchain have to have these criteria, have to have these um, properties. The point is, uh, whatever transactions we do, the terms and um, and the fact that the the transaction was done is public for anyone to see, right? So there is nothing hidden. I the thing is that is uh, these terms these terms are agreed upon from the beginning, and you we both know them. In other cases, for example, I cannot introduce terms afterward. Uh, like uh, that can happen in other um, contexts. Like I cannot introduce in terms after I created the asset. I tell you it cannot be revoked. I cannot after transferring it to you. Actually, after creating the asset, I cannot uh, come back and change that. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's that's true. So I cannot come back and change that afterwards. It's it's um it's something that we we know from the beginning, uh, both of us. It's not something that can introduce later on. Um yeah so okay so this as far like um maybe um we we can all think about this and 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 uh, maybe in the next tutorials um, Rahmat or um maybe also on Slack we can have a discussion because I think this is important, um, like understanding the nature of, of um, blockchains and transactions that can happen there. Anyway, uh, I think we went over time enough. I hope uh, this was clear. If anyone has a, another question, we can take the last question or we end this here. Okay. Um, uh, all right. So let's end this here. I think uh, um, someone asked about uh, sharing the notebook. Um, yes, I can share the notebook. Um, no problem. Um, okay. So yeah, I think we can end this here. We can stop the recording. And um, yeah. See you. Thank you for being here and for listening.